In this video we will cover the performance tab of the Optical Prime dashboard. In this project, we have two collector runs, collector run 197 and 198. Most projects will only have one collector run. The virtual machines here are VMs targeted directly by the collector. Clicking on one of the collector runs will display details about the selected collection. Clicking on more information expands the section and you'll see totals for capacity, performance, and network information. Notice that some of the items on the project navigation bar are grayed out. These have been excluded from the calculations. If these are not necessary for the workload analysis, you can hide them using the Hide Excluded Nodes button on the top. If you would like to include these servers back into the calculation, simply use the radio boxes on the left. Notice that the buttons Recalculate and Reset appear on top. This allows us to recalculate the total metrics across the project. Do note that recalculation can take a while, especially in very large projects that involve many servers and virtual machines. Let's take a look at another project. In this project, we have a mixture of physical servers, hypervisors, and virtual machines. Notice the virtual and cloud pricing tabs on top. These tabs are present if there are guest VMs included in the project. In the hypervisor section, notice that we have a cluster comprised of two servers and one standalone hypervisor. As we continue to expand the tree, we can see additional server components such as disks and network interfaces. At the bottom of the project, we can see the shared cluster disks. These are the data stores used by the hypervisors. If you exclude some of them, you'll notice that the relevant disks used by the hypervisor have been excluded as well, since they are the same item. If you click on this disk, you can confirm that this is a shared disk, while some of the others are local drives. Let's look at one of the physical servers. Clicking on more information allows us to view processor information, the service tag or serial number, the server model, the total amount of memory, network information, and others. This data is provided by the operating system as it sees it. We do not collect hardware details from the hardware directly. The next tabs will provide more details on the disks, installed applications, and top processes running on this server. Choosing one of these hypervisors, you'll see details on the right indicating the type of hypervisor used, the number of guest VMs, total memory, disk capacity, and other important details. Disk information is available in the Disks tab, and the only application installed is the hypervisor. Next, let's view a virtual machine where data was collected directly by the collector. We can assess this VM like a physical server where we can see the same performance graphs, disk information installed applications, and the top processes running in the VM. Let me open up another project so we can look at some interesting performance graphs. These performance graphs represent the total performance of the project since we have the entire project selected. The graph shown here indicates the total IOPS of this project, for both read and write IOPS, and it also indicates the total performance at the 95th percentile which is 12,329 IOPS. You can select which graph you would like to view via the drop-down box, and if you scroll down further, you can view all these graphs at the same time by selecting All. Choosing All will allow you to view all the performance metrics as they are happening at a particular time. This is very useful during performance troubleshooting. Let's look at the participation graph. This graph represents the number of servers participating during the collection run. Notice there are white vertical lines in the graph. This indicates that some of the servers were rebooted during the collection run. Zooming into one of these, we can see that about 24 minutes past midnight, 12 servers were rebooted and offline for a few minutes. Let's check the network throughput graph. This graph includes all network traffic except fiber channel traffic. Any network communication, including wireless communication to other devices will be included here. If iSCSI storage is attached to any of the servers, it will also be included. Let's check for page faults. There are two types of page faults, hard and soft page faults. We do not track soft page faults. This graph represents hard page faults where data has to be retrieved from disk when it was expected to be found in memory. Another important graph is the workload concentration bubble. This chart plots the disks and sorts them by I.O. activity. The vertical placement of the bubble represents the amount of I.O., while the size of each of the bubbles are proportional to the disk capacity. 
the horizontal axis demonstrates the total amount of I.O. that falls within a certain percentage of total capacity. I hope that this video has helped you to understand the performance tab. There is a lot of information to go through, so feel free to explore. Thank you for using Live Optics.